Jehova Malak Olam Olamat Jehova Malak Yame Rakis Jehova Gadol Makarian Tios Jehova Erdonai Jehova Elohim Kurios Tios Pantakreta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda et Ehova El Emuna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Pantakreta Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurios Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Nimohagion Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Zon Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma El Nakum Yehova El Nakum Yapa Netzak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triambos Yehova Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Nimohagion Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Jesus Christos Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Mishvat Shaba The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. In order to understand the path that we walk under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, should always enable and lead us according to the demands or prescription demands of the word of the Lord of God and not the path that we walk according to the sinful pattern of our roles in nature and to have an imagination to think we will be qualified in heaven. So today, dear brethren, we shall learn some of the things as Lord God the Holy Ghost would lead us to realize and to understand the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which has been given unto us so that we could walk in making up our life to the praise of His glory in His grace. 
So sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique well, the wonders of this great and unique word of the Lord of our God. So that making sure that our names have been found written in the book of life, exercising this great life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in order to grow up and understand the life that we live as an impact of heavenly realm and not any longer on this earthly standards. So dear brethren, our only teacher, mentor and guide is Lord God, the Holy Ghost. So confess your sins through rebound. The purpose of Lord God, the Holy Ghost is to guide us into all truth and to reveal us deep and great things of the mystery doctrine of the church age so that we could be well qualified and not to be ashamed when we stand in his presence. After this prayer, we shall continue. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique valley wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us so that we could be well qualified to stand in the presence according to the praise of your glory. And nothing else than that to prepare our lives, to look the end or to have a forethought about the standards of the life after death as Moses tells in Deuteronomy chapter 32 to teach us, oh, that this man would be wise to consider the later end. So, Father, as we grow up in this grace which you have given for us in this church age to breathe in these nostrils in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we pray to edify us to reach that our names have been written in your book of life and not to be found naked when we appear in their presence. So, Father, as we study the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The two things which we read in the Bible, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches to us the narrow road, the straightened road. All would desire to walk in it, but very few would walk in that. In Isaiah, he talks about the ways of the Lord of a God are highways of holiness. So these two things, first we have to learn. The straightened road or the narrow road, the road which is very difficult to handle. And when once we have been graduated from these narrow roads in integrity and purity of the word of the Lord, Without any fear, we can walk in the holiness or the highway of the holiness of the Lord. So first thing, as he says, you should be born again to walk in the highway of the holiness. Before being born again, we in the old sin nature are still walking in the narrow roads. The narrow roads wherewith from that place we have to go up into the standards of the highway of holiness. This narrow roads is what first where you should be get perfected. And by that we meant to say not in sin. But to realize and to understand how much the grace of Lord God aboundeth more and more than the activities of the flesh what we have done to save us. The narrow roads teach how wretched, as Peter says, depart from me, I am a sinful man having your consciousness to get repentance unto God. These are the narrow roads. If you just look your life, how wretched sinner we are. In that wedding invitation of Matthew 22, he says, Go and call the people who are really not worthy of that kingdom. The same thing as he said to that Syrophoenician woman, not to cast the children's foot to dogs. Really, when we look, we are not at all worthy. We are the wretched sinners of all time, as Apostle Paul could say, and the chiefest sinner of all time. 
and he would further continue for us to teach, there is nothing good that could dwell in this flesh. So here, dear brethren, the narrow roads resemble our way of life, the life that we are living before believing in Christ. And if we are able to look and realize and understand how wretched sinners we are, because we cannot be saved by any other method apart from believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and then being born again, that is after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone, we need to walk in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost breath by breath. So as we are walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost breath by breath, we face to recollect in our mind the narrow road path of life that we executed. The reason why I'm telling the narrow road path of life, dear brethren, the logic behind that is when you're not properly licensed or when you don't have all the documents of your vehicle, in my country, India, the destination to reach from point A to point B, one path would be straight in highway. The other path would be the inner roads, the inner circles, which are very straight and which are very narrow. And yet, you will reach to the destination point B, but with great difficulty. In the other road, you have the highway of holiness, where you could reach. In a very simple way, when you have all the things clear, including your license. So when we are walking in those paths first in the narrow road without license, and we are trying to reach perfection in that, in the sense to understand how much we have grieved and squelched and waxed and lied and resisted Lord God the Holy Ghost. When we have walked in such kind of paths, now when God the Father calls us to walk, giving you the license, giving you everything for your vehicle, so that if there is any checkup with the policeman on the roads, you would have all confidence to say you are up to date, nothing of a fault. Your vehicle is up to the mark, your pollution check is up to the mark, your insurance is up to the mark, your license is up to the mark. All the things needed for you to wear, like helmet if you are riding bicycle, a motorcycle. You have all the things up to date, so you can walk freely. You can walk fearlessly. But on the other end, when you are going into those narrow roads, in the narrow paths, the straightened roads, you never had all the things up to date, including your license. So you would reach that point of destination B, with a lot of strain and stress and difficulty. But when you reach to that point, you would think you have achieved something, which is great for you to say, yes, I have achieved that point. But in reality, what you have lost is that the great fearless life. The point what I want to illustrate, dear brethren, while we were at sinners, Christ died for us so that we shall no longer live the rest of our life, when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in accord with the pattern of the narrow path. The narrow path is what you have been living, having not a life assured that your names are written in heaven. The narrow path is what you break up in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And in such narrow path, when you're walking, all the days of your life, you're just emphasizing stress and strain. No freedom to face your officers because your vehicle is not up to date, you're not up to date, you're not having the license to drive the vehicle. But the life that you're living there is a heck of a life, the stress of a life. But when Christ our Lord our God has set us free to walk in the highway of holiness, why is it we shall still walk? in the ways which are not the highway of holiness, but rather to understand, to walk in the narrow gate, in the straight gate, the strain and the stress which you go through to understand this life in this church age, it clearly gives you the importance that carrying your cross in the paths where you walked earlier, in the paths where you could reach your destination, in the paths from wherewith, though you cannot be eligible to walk in the highway 
highways, you walked in the narrow roads and you reached your destination, the other part which you are telling the two ways, you achieved it. So in the same way now, after believing in Christ, you need to walk in the narrow path, in the narrow road, by carrying your cross every day, by becoming day by day in those same narrow paths, the way how you could reach your destination, no matter whatever may be the cunning fables of Satan, now you learn to live, that you will reach your destination by following my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in such narrow paths. That narrow paths include day by day to grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat, from the standards of meat as we look from disciples into grammatiers, from grammatiers into the standards of apostolos, from apostolos into the confirmation of the standards of Christos. So this from disciple to grammatias is a very narrow path. You are expertizing that path. You are learning that path to be achieved. Again now when you have become a grammatias, as Matthew 23, 34 goes on to teach, that is going to send his men for us. From that grammatias you are going to reach now the second stage called to be apostolas. And from that apostolos, your third stage is what you're confirming to Christos. And this is a narrow road, a narrow path. The paths where you achieved your success from A to B without having your proper license, without having your proper things which have to be for your vehicle, but you reach those success. But now, since in Christ you have been set free and you're called to walk in the highway of holiness, no fear of the officers, because you have all the things up to date, including your license, then how much more you need to attain to move from glory to glory. Not just becoming Christos, but becoming perfect as God the Father in heaven is. As he said, be you perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. First, if you are not prepared, basics perfect. To walk in the narrow paths perfect. Without having your license, without having your vehicle documents up to date, you can reach from point A to point B in the inner roads. But when once you have learned that path to reach, after believing in Christ, in the same paths, now you become confirmed to the holiness of the Lord, as he says, that we shall be found before him, before the foundation of the world, holy and blameless. And he has called us to be presented before him with all mannerisms of perfect standards that we could be amomas, Hagios and Agnaketas. The first one, Hagios, he has kept us sanctified and calls us now to be saint. Our momas is what, what we have to train, inward and outward. When there is no inward blemish, then there is no outward blemish, even in our words and deeds and thoughts. And then we have the third category called to be Agnaketas, so that we could be irreproachable or irreproachable, so that there is no one who can give us this fault among us. So these three qualities, what God the Father has designed for us to be in the Lord, we have to achieve that by walking in the narrow road. But now the problem arises. Because we think we are really qualified to walk in the highways, but we are not practicing the paths of holiness. We are not practicing the paths of Amomas, we are not practicing the paths of irreproachable called to be Agnaketas in Colossians 1.18. And we can think now that we are really walking the paths which are needed to meet the standards of the highway of holiness in the Lord. But Lord God calls us to walk us in the highway of holiness all the days of our life at every breath, not just few seconds of this life, but every breath. And why does he want us to qualify at every breath? Because the high, holy, heavenly calling in the church age is not just to be found satisfied that your names have been written in the book of the Lamb of the Life, but rather to manifest that you have been given the power to this world to realize and to make them that you can pull them out from the region of darkness you can give them and to make them to understand 
that all deliverance is in Christ. Your peace of life is in Christ. As that's what we were looking yesterday. Having an absolute confidence that our names have been recorded in heaven. Your love affairs, your life affairs, your responsible affairs with your relationships. All these things seem to be peace with God. But the majority of the people, though Christ our Lord our God has called none to be perished, that whosoever believeth or calleth upon the name of my Lord God shall be saved, says the word. Yet there are men who are not able to instruct each other, as every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ought to instruct each other. So today we find men who are not able to instruct so that they may become or they may learn, they may become disciples, they may grow up into grammatias, so that they may learn so as not to die. Every day you're living, you're dying. Not in the sense as Apostle Paul says, daily we die in Christ. They're dying every day in Christ so that day by day they could become perfect in that narrow paths, in that straight gate paths. And in the straight gate paths, what they're going through, in the narrow paths, what they're learning through, they could become proving that they are really holy, manifesting that they're really amomas, t telling they're really irreproachable, agnacetas to the world. That's what they're trying to prove. They're dying every day. That's what Apostle Paul says. But here, the people, what we look today in the present Christendom, the way they are living, the way they are exercising this life, it clearly shows us that they are dying. What? Spiritual death. Though they are alive in Christ, their life is spiritual death. They are preparing themselves for the second death. So Baruch was instructed to write the things in his book, saying when Jeremiah could write because he was there with Jeremiah, and the duty of every believer, maybe we learn from that Baruch, because some of the things which have not been written, what are the instructions Jeremiah was told to Baruch, they were burnt off with the thing of Elishaba as we look upon that gate. And the things what he has written once again, they were not been told, but we have in this book Baruch. And here it's not the thing that we believe not the Apocrypha books, but we don't consider them either. But there is a word which says for us, everyone, as far as possible, that is, we as believers in Christ, should teach others so that while they are still living, let them not die. But rather, we are here told to teach them that the life, what they are learning, it should be in order that they may live after their death. And here is what people are failing today in our pulpits. Much of the time what the present pastor teachers are emphasizing or going on to preach. Live your life as it is today for you. But they're not teaching to you to look your life after you die. So that as day by day goes on, as, as the thing goes on, you should be in the presence of Lord God the Father to walk in the path of the highway of His holiness. They are not emphasizing to you today these things. The highway of holiness wherewith you and I should walk. In order to become perfected in the highway of holiness, first we should reach in the narrow gates, in the straight gates, by daily carrying our cross, day by day perfection, to meet these three standards because we are hagios, and in that Hagios nature, we have to prove that we are holy. In that Amomas nature, we have to prove that we are really blameless inside and outside. In that Agnocatus, wherewith there is not of a blame that could be put upon you, that you have lived a life worthless on this earth, and you are not accounted worthy to the kingdom, to the world that is going to come. So, dear brethren, the life that we are living, it has to be in the standards that we are able to walk day by day that we have been preparing you to escape your second death. 
The problem in the present Christendom is you are not being prepared today, day by day, to escape your second death. As Baruch was being told through Jeremiah, write down these things. And he teaches to them as far as possible. You and I as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you should teach them to learn not to die while they live. But rather in return, they should live by dying day by day to the flesh, being alive to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And you should be well qualified to meet your Lord after you die. And as we read, giving instead of water, vinegar, instead of meat, the gall. Our name shall be blotted out from the book of life. And people are not happy to understand that their names have been blotting out because they don't want to master up the narrow roads first so that they can walk fearlessly in the paths of the highway of the holiness of the Lord. They have not been well prepared in the paths where God the Father has called us to walk, breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, who is the only one who shall guide you into all the truth. Therefore, the reasons why our names have been blotted out, number one priority for you, you don't have a proper mentor to guide you. The very first reason why and how your names could be blotted out from the book of the living. No proper teacher. And who could be the best teacher? Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Not foolishly and arrogantly thinking that Lord God, the Holy Spirit is what the Storm Dick and Harry will claim, saying in that Mahmadinism concept. Lord God, the Holy Ghost is the Trinity, Lord of a God. He is equal with God the Father, God the Son in essence. In personality we come up to do His work in His time as the time goes on to reveal His plan for us. And what does He do? He said in John chapter 16, When He's going to come, you shall guide you into all the truth. The number one reason why your names will be blotted out is that you haven't met till now Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you have met Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He would guide you into all the truth. His work is to guide you into all the truth and nothing else than that. He doesn't have any other business with you to be done on this earth. He has only one thing, to guide you into all the truth, nothing but the truth. You haven't met till now Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If not, you would have met the right bona fide gifted pastor teacher who would emphasize for you to look upon the word of the Lord of a God, rather having your life to be thinking that weekly ones is enough, your affair with weekly ones is enough, and expecting some signs and miracles or wonders to happen to be in the midst of this powers and crooked nation's people. When the completed can of scripture has been finished, there is nothing God the Father could ever do for you in your life. As you foolishly think. He said when the completed can of scripture has been finished, there is no way you are looking for signs or wonders. Because in Matthew chapter 7, the people who claim such signs and wonders are such stupid things in this life. And they think they can achieve great things. They also claim before the presence of God the Father saying that we have done this, we have done that. We have made our life in such region, in such realm. But he says, workers of iniquity, depart from me, I never knew you. And there is no excuse for it. No matter whatever the people may think on this earth, there is no excuse for it. If we don't become the word of Lord God, by the right mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, first of all, your purpose of life being born in this world is not really understood. At the other end, 
since you have not been still yet born again in the Lord. You know, dear brother, and being born again in the Lord is very, very simple. Because people don't understand being born again in Christ, what it is all about. Now you have been given license to go into that highway. You are born again in the sense your path and your walk is now exactly in that highway, highway of holiness of the Lord. And in the presence of God the Father, when it is called to be the highway of holiness, we are transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His light. The light of His dear beloved Son. In the Gospel of John chapter 8, He doesn't abide in darkness. And today people are not able to understand that you shall not abide in darkness when you believe in Christ, you shall walk in light. And since you shall walk in light, He has given you the power of 2 Timothy 1 7, having the great brain of you, the sound mind of you, and that sound mind has to be renovated. How? Through the right bona fide gifted pastor teacher. People are foolish, people are ignorant, people know not Christ. Because you haven't met the man who could train you up. You look to emphasize upon the miracles for them, healings for them, signs and wonders for them. But dear brethren, nothing will stand before the completed can of scripture as your bona fide duty is to teach and to train them up according to the mind of Christ every day. The men who haven't yet met Lord God, the Holy Spirit, still reside in darkness. They don't have the confidence that the names have been recorded in the heaven. They don't have the clothing every day to be war before Christ. They're not walking in that great clothes which God the Father has given them to wear. Therefore, they look upon the details of life. And they have been found naked. Matthew 22 verses 8 through 14. And Lord God calls them the people called as Hatiros. He used the same name for Judas Iscariot. Hatiros. And he mentions Hatiros over there with the reason that, friend, why are you not having the wedding garment? And the thing what he could say, he was speechless. And today people are thinking, believing in Christ is enough, not carrying his cross every day, or confirming to the image of Christ is not enough, having the thinking of Christ is not enough, being taught and guided by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, it's not needed. And people are still thinking, Let, let's we enjoy. The stupid details of this life as number one priority. Let us enjoy. And they're so happy that they don't believe further anything in Christ. Because they haven't met Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as your teacher. The reasons why your names will be blotted out, we look in Psalms chapter 80 teaching there for us some of the sections of the categories called to be wild boar and wild beast. And we read about these words. It is not that we have a fun to repeat the same things, but we know very well you forget them. And here we find in Psalms chapter 80 when he's mentioning in verse number 12 the solid reason in verse 13. In verse 12 he says, Why have we broken down her wedges? And why do you want to destroy your own life before God the Father could put her hedge upon you? So he calls, Why have we broken down your hedges? So that they all which pass by the way do pluck her. You know why there is no shepherd, where there is no proper teaching, where there is no proper mentoring of the word of the Lord of our God. You will truly understand that you have been given devouring to the ravenous wolves. But today the shepherds themselves have become ravenous wolves. 
they have been plucked up by such standards of men in our pulpits that they are really revenuous wolves to the core. And to such an extent they are revenuous wolves, they don't even have a pity that after they die they will be into the lake of fire forever. Because he said in James 3, were not many men to become preachers. And why these people, they will be into the lake of fire? The logic is very simple. Because they haven't taught you the fear of the Lord, neither they have been sent by the Lord of a God, as Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 18 through 22 teaches to us. If they have been sent by the Lord of a God, they would make you to come back and learn and understand the counsel of the word of the Lord. But since they haven't been sent by the Lord my God, they make you to stand in the stupid details of this life as number one priority. And since they have kept you there, the logic is very simple to teach to us that everyone who passeth by, everyone who goeth by, they're going to pluck you up. They just go by, they pluck you up. So they become a trap. They're becoming a prey for the predators. And since the shepherd has failed to do the work, we learn that in Ezekiel, we learn that in Jeremiah, we learn that even in Isaiah. The shepherds become dumb dogs, they don't bark. They're not taking care of the flock. They don't give proper care to the flock. So since they're not giving proper care and they're dumb dogs, in simple words he teaches to us, I require account from the shepherds. And who are the shepherds? The one who holds the seven spirits in his hand. The seven spirits are nothing but the seven angels. The seven angels, from where they come, they come from the right hand of God the Father. They don't come by their own self. That's the problem with us. People are not able to realize or understand. They're thinking they're able to come with their own standards to be the life on this church and trying to think that they can degrade a business. No, dear brethren. It is God the Father who shall send us. We come from the right hand of Lord God the Father to emphasize you to get back into the fellowship of the word of the Lord of a God and to make up your life according to the standards of the word of the Lord of a God. And there is nothing of a business wherewith you think you can become a shepherd and not involved in the Lord's ideal ministry. How your names are blotted out. You haven't yet met Lord God the Holy Spirit. If you have met Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He would have guided you, not in tongues or miracles or healings, as foolishly you give or limit the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, before the completion of the can of Scripture as it was in the temporary spiritual gifts. You're limiting Lord, my Lord God, the Holy Ghost, by your foolish way of understanding of the Scriptures. That's the great problem for us today. You're limiting Him. And today, people are not able to realize that the temporary spiritual gifts have been seized long back. And still you are emphasizing upon the temporary spiritual gifts. Still you are exercising Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to be limited. But you haven't understood the Ephesians epistle in the Mystery Doctrine that every believer should have the same thinking, same renovating capacity like the thinking of my Christ. You are not able to understand that. The same thinking, the same reality of Christ, what we ought to be in the Lord. So you are still limiting your capacity by thinking miracles are enough, talking in tongues is enough, though he said, these temporary things will be seized off. When the permanent one will come, he knows now to give four gifts in that 
New Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles and the Old Testament prophets and the time of the completion of the canon of scripture of apostles they have done their work but now you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being under the guidelines of Lord God the Holy Ghost breath by breath teaching to you the importance of this great and true life in Christ your absolute duty and work is to become a New Testament prophet a New Testament apostle because he said he's going to send the scribes and the wise men and the prophets the scribes are the people where with he wanted them to over teach you know the problem with us is today you are not been properly trained by the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath therefore you are not well prepared to teach the things which have been there as been found for us in the bible therefore we can easily conclude that you are not been sent by the law If you were sent by the Lord my God you would make them to understand the importance of becoming disciples or born disciples and growing up into grammatias you would tell them the cost as he says in the gospel of Luke chapter 14 First wouldn't he sit and calculate the cost First wouldn't he sit and calculate the strength rather than to stop in middle rather than to lose the battle therefore forsaking everything and following my lord is worthy to christ because you have to go up to make your names found written in the book of life the day when you prove that your names have been written and found in the book of life that day is the day where you're free that the day where you called to be alutheria in order to find that day day by day carrying your cross breath by breath walking in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost will take time the disciples when they walked with my lord they found they came back with the mission given to them and they were joyed and having that great joy we have we learned from this life from that lesson that when they have done the work when they have achieved the work of lord god the holy spirit they were with a great joy and lord god the father when they have done the work when they have executed the work and what was the work joining as disciples growing up into grammatias in the church age matthew 13:52 and now we have for us in ephesians chapter 4 not just to be the grammatias but in return becoming the standards of christos being grown up into apostolos When you have done your work, you are having a great joy which God the Father could say as he said to his disciples when he sent the 70 disciples. Rejoice, your names have been written in the heaven. That is the great joy when you have that great assurance that you have done the work of the Lord. You did execute the will of the Lord. You know, dear brethren, that joy makes you to understand your names have been recorded and kept in the heaven but today people are not able to understand that their names have been not yet been recorded in the heaven yet do the things which match the demands of the word of the lord but these people haven't done that they are able to look the life from the viewpoint as other unbelievers look what to eat what to drink what to wear how to find happiness how to find the income how to do this how to do that therefore the reason why baruch writes over there as jeremiah guides him let them live to live a life that which could match the later end of this life the life that could lead them to understand that while they're living let them be prepared to escape the second death that's as simple as that dear brethren while you still live on this earth you should be well prepared to escape your second death don't be prepared for your end times that after you die you will be in the lake of fire but every day you live You died to the world and due to Christ and nothing else than that. If you are not living to the word of the Lord of God, if you are not making up your life to the will of God the Father, 
the things in this earth which can appetize your desires more to live like hell as you think you're living you're living like hell there are many things on this earth which can appetize your desires in such a way but in reality the word of lord god is so sure that it is not the life that we are living maketh us as these people they think the life that they are living is of a great satisfaction the life that they are living is of a great worth and it could be accounted for many things that's what these people they think winning gold medals in olympic making your names recorded in the guinness book of world record or this or that to say you're such a brilliant yes those brilliant things what we tell for you is the ways as you walk or as you pass through to understand that you're walking in the narrow roads those are the brilliant ways what you're walking but in reality we don't want those ways which could make you to be there but rather we want you to have the ways which could make you to be well prepared for eternity achieve those things on this earth you are just proving your far eye having some greater capability like a superhuman or extraordinary person on this earth or having your real in such and such way to say that you are capacitated to have that you are greater than this because you are a good athlete great athlete or all whatsoever the things you are in your life you are just proving you are some some sort of superior than the other person that will be only for the time of this life on this earth but we want you to be greater forever to be recorded in the heaven something which is absolutely superior something which can make you to be well qualified something which can give you a great confidence that after you die you will be in the presence of god the father forever something of a great assurance So how your names have been blotted out you haven't met yet Lord God the Holy Ghost who can guide you into all the truth who always make it you to walk in the sphere of the spirit of holiness because with him constantly the angels proclaim holy one holy one holy one and with him the pronounce is nothing but the truth look into your life and up to what extent you're standing for the truth in Christ you are really not able to understand your life why your names have been blotted out instead of water you are giving him vinegar instead of meat you are giving him gall how would you expect your names could be recorded in the book of life what confidence you have that your names have been recorded in the book of life and how your names will be blotted out the logic behind that is very very simple the names of your the 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 reasons why your names will be blotted out is that you don't have proper pastor teacher being given the gift by lord god the holy ghost with the same burden of lord god the holy spirit as joint partaker and what do they do with the same burden having the same burden they shall guide you into all the truth the truth what these people they are teaching to you every day is not the truth the truth what we look upon the truth what we find is exegomai the manner of life as he said in acts chapter 20 verses 18 through 20 again the same thing he emphasized in acts chapter 20 verses 28 through 32 the same thing in ephesians 4 11 through 13 the same thing in the standards of jeremiah 315 and today why many men are not being qualified the men who have joined us disciples have to go up into grammatics and do the will of god the father the same men the same men we can find them they're not qualified they haven't come to the realization to understand that the life that they're leading the life that they're going through is not qualifying them to the praise of his glory and that what we are looking today in our pulpits men who come to talk many more things but they themselves are not qualified as a blind leader than the blind so the reasons why your names have been blotted out in psalms chapter 18 verse number 13 he gives that reason 
He says first why do you want to break up your own edges? The things pertaining to this life on this earth. Why do you want to break up your own edges? And the road or the edges what he teaches or what he talks. He says in very simple words the protection from the Lord. As Satan claims in the life of Job. He says that the name of them, since you have protected, since you have given them protection, so I cannot go through that hedge. So here it teaches the same thing, that the hedges you are breaking down for your own self. And then furthermore, the people who are passing by, they are plucking you out. So he says, who are they? The boar. The word boar, what we find for us in the Hebrew, is called to be kaze'er. And the ancient pictographical representation of this word we read. A wall of fortification without having the, the digging weapons or the weapons which could go on to dig. And the weapons which will not have the things pertaining to the thinking of Christ to be renovated. So what does this boar kind of man they do? They come to take away your life from the truth. So they make up in the standards that the wall of fortification, what they're going through, and the things pertaining to the weapons of warfare, what they're going through, they absolutely become ruined. So, they don't renovate your thinking. So, they don't strengthen the things which are left over, as you say, as we read yesterday for the people of Sardis. You say you are living, but in return you are not living, you are dead. So the same thing over here, what we look, he says, Kazir, your wall of fortification do not match to the word of God. Your thinking implement do not match to the word of God. Your renovation standards do not match to the word of God. So you're failed. So you have been occupied with such pastor kind of men who haven't been given the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. And this man, they have not been met in their entire lifetime, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit which is not the meaning of speaking in tongues or doing miracles or XYZ. They compare the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to such kind of a stupid thing on this earth that they think by doing the temporary signs and wonders, they have met Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and they can prophesy and they can do this and they can do that. But in return, these are wild boars. They don't strengthen the wall of fortification wherewith you have to be founded in the word of the Lord. They don't give you the renovation of standards of your thinking by using the agriculture weapons. The weapon which has been used as an instrument to dig and take the word of the Lord. They don't do it. The renovation of the standards of their thinking, they don't make it up. And what a life that they think they're living is great is absolutely not at all great in the sight of the word of the Lord. So these are wild boars what we find. And since they haven't met Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who can guide them into all truth, nothing but an absolute truth. As we illustrated for you the point, buying a costliest bed to have a good sleep is not, but having a clear consciousness towards Lord God, though you sleep. The place which is very awkward, not just having the bed, the place where you don't even have a proper place to sleep. Since your conscience is clear towards God, since you have met the conditions and the demands of the word of the Lord, since you are able to perform that, since you have met them, since you are able to realize that, you know, you will really have a great sleep rather than founding not to be having any sleep at all. So dear brethren, the first thing why your names have been blotted out, you haven't met yet Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been guided by such false men who lead you into that narrow roads without having proper legal license. The proper legal license is what the bona fide gift given for us from the head of the department of the church by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Since they haven't given this, since they don't have this, ultimately, dear brethren, you are under the standards of Kezi Air. And today much of the present Christendom is in the standards of Kezi'er teaching. And since they walk through such sorts of Kezi'er teaching, really we look, their life is absolutely 
destroyed, not found in the lake of fire, not, not found in the book, but in the lake of fire. They themselves are destroyed, and they themselves are making up their life to be in the standards of such stupidity. And the second one word, what we find over here, is very important. After Kezir, we find the word called to be as wild beast. And who are the wild beast? The Hebrew word for it is called to be Ziz. Z-I-Y-Z. -Z. And this Ziz is nothing but they will completely stop to renovate the standards of your thinking at any cost. It is like the way they break up your digging weapons. It is like the sense to say that you lose your senses because you haven't been properly taught the word of the Lord. So Kazi'ir at one end meant to say they break up the wall of fortification where they have been well established to have the teachings of the word of the Lord of our God in you in the renovated work. And Ziz is such kind of a standard where you have been absolutely stopped to dig and take the infallible and ignorant word of God. So the two things, at one end Kazi'ir, at the other end Ziz. And today, dear brethren, the Christendom which we are going through, you are not being found to be with the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because of this both categories of men. Your names, why they haven't been recorded, or your names, why they will be not kept alive. In the presence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is very simple because you have been stuck up with wild boars and wild beasts. And such kind of men who are wild boars and wild beasts are reigning today in our pulpits to the highest. And that there are men who are not able to understand that such kind of a wild boars and wild beasts, as they come along day by day in the fellowship, as they have been led in the realm of their thinking in such standards of life to say that, they have really been sent by the Lord, but in, but in reality they haven't been sent by the Lord God at all. They come up with their own full standards of life. And since they come up with such, such standards of life, which is absolutely foolish, they are making your eternal life at the stake of their stupid thinking to be absolutely destroying your names to be found in the book of life. So, dear brethren, the things which we have been told... As the word says, as far as possible, we have to teach. We have to make them to learn, to look the life in the prospective viewpoint of the standards as we call the life after death. And today, as many people are not preparing so that they shall not die at the last time, but they shall learn in order that they may live at the last times. The day by day, if you fail to renovate the standards of your thinking according to the demands of the word of the Lord of a God, you are dying at the last time. But you should live. That's what the word says. You should live. You should be well prepared to meet your Lord. You should be well prepared to know your Lord. And you should be there to meet your Lord after you die. And as Apostle Paul claims, daily we die in the Lord. It's a great high and unique privilege for us to understand that even we shall die daily, provided when we walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we have expertised in the narrow path, and now with freedom we are able to walk in the standards of the great holiness of Jehovah, the highway of His holiness. So, dear brethren, which is your life? Your names to be blotted out. Know your reasons. The wild boars and the wild beasts a lot. And since there have been wild boars and wild beasts to the highest, your day by day standards of life to renovate your thinking is needed a lot. And to be well prepared to meet your Lord God after you die. If you are not qualified to meet your Lord God after you die, your life doesn't have any meaning, any purpose. They have been given one more day, one more time, one more chance. 
Again, you do the same thing tomorrow as well by using the grace of Lord God in vain glory. But you are never prepared to meet your Lord in truth. So, dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. So, with our head, board, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order, we'll to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that to be my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest much groping grace in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, by which you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the greatest much is to carry so thon down. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the diamond from my witnesses, for which you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in their infinity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. <laughs> Infinitely divine Holy Father, we are grateful and thankful for this great time which you have given unto us all to understand the reasons to blot out our names by not walking in the highway of holiness and in return not yet being met, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who shall guide us into all the truth. So, Father, we pray the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to challenge us upon this subject more and more and to teach us to be aware about the wild boars and the wild beasts so that we could be absolutely free from such stupid way of life and come back to learn your truth by day by day walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. This is Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, precious name, we pray, Father. Amen.